Welcome to episode 5 of the Box Office Bros. We are your hosts, I'm Anthony. I'm Liam. And in today's episode, we have a special guest. Introduce yourself. I'm Nick, I'm the Foster Box Office brother. Yes, and we're going to be talking about movies, TV shows, and Oscar snubs. Let's get right into it. So, the last episode we were going to be talking about, we were going to talk about Dune. But we ended up not being able to record after seeing Dune because we went to a very late showing. But we're here today to discuss yeah, Dune Part the, Two. Uh, it's been it's been a crazy couple weeks for us. I yes, was, uh, I was. You went to Florida. Sick. Yeah, you, we both went to Florida. Well, no, so. Not me. Yeah, this I wish. Uh, this Dune uh, this this Dune review has been long in the waiting. I've had the chance to see it twice. Wow. So. And an IMAX Dolby? What'd you see? It IMAX. In? Oh, I saw it in IMAX, IMAX too. All, IMAX all the way, baby. I yeah. think I prefer Dolby though as a movie experience. I feel like you're in the movie more. See, ultimately, they kind of feel the same to me. Okay. Like, I just know if I'm going to a movie, I'd like to see it in not a standard version. Okay, sure. So, also, the Oscars happened in the last month. That they did. Yeah, it was a, it was a real Oppenheimer sweep. Oppenheimer won around. seven awards, mm-hmm. I believe. I believe they got nominated for, what, 11? I could be wrong about that. And Robert Downey Jr. with his first Oscars yes. win. Congratulations yeah. We're going to discuss him. the wins... The losses and the snubs. So actually, we'll get right into it. So, best actor, Killian Murphy. I think he's been winning most of the awards throughout the season, so this wasn't really a shock. Um, I mean, he's been he's been he's been doing great work as an actor for 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 a long time now. Extremely had, well earned. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty he's pretty iconic, even though he's a pretty like quiet personality, just because yeah. you know the the pro- projects he's been in. I call it a um, mysterious aura. Okay. Yeah. He's got a he's got a real yeah. uh, he's got a real low key vibe about him. I honestly didn't know who he was before Oppenheimer. Really? Yeah. Was he anything big? I know he was in the uh, he Twenty Eight Days Pe- Later. Or he whatever. was in Peaky Blinders. Okay, I as, didn't see uh, it as Tommy Shelby. I believe he was in. Um, he's in uh, the Dark Knight trilogy as really? Scarecrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. got his first yes, Oscar Yes, Best Supporting win. Actor, first ever. Well, well deserved. Amazing him. speech. He's a great talent. Thank you to my terrible childhood and the Academy in that order. I and thought that was a pretty nice line. Just, and, uh, just a beautiful speech all around. Yep. And then also we have Best Actress, Emma Stone for Poor Things. I'll talk about Poor Things a little later in the episode. I'll give my thoughts, but some people think... It should have been um, Lily Gladstone. Lily Gladstone, thank you for the name. Was robbed, and I believe Emma Stone knows that but for a fact. It was like a two horse race, though. Throughout I, the award season, it was going back and forth. I guess so. so. I mean, I loved Emma Stone's performance from what I've seen. I didn't see the movie, but like, I believe that she bought. I, like, I a would very... assume they gave it to her more because, like. Lily Gladstone, as great as she was, she wasn't like the the central character. She was only like an hour of the movie, right? It was a very <laughs> understated I mean, role. Yeah, she had a she had a very important okay. role in the movie, but the movie wasn't necessarily about her character. Okay. She wasn't the leading figure. It was more about uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's mm-hmm. character. And um, but I think her role and like her place in the story, and I mean. Her performance really was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, that cannot be understated. As excellent as the acting in um, Killers of the Flower Moon was, it's like, poor things from what I've seen is just a lot more animated. And like... Very, yeah. For, Very stylized. Yeah, and that kind of acting, like, in a lot of the style, stylistic movies that I've seen, you know, that requires a lot of physical skill from the actors as well and you know for anyone who has seen a scorsese movie you do know a majority of the time it is just sort of sitting and staring and subtext and things like that compared to poor things which is like very loud and explosive and those are two very different kinds of acting i believe which honestly might be why the academy recognized emma but stone she also already won an oscar so you think that they'd want to give it to yeah, someone with Lily the first time that one. but i'm it's sure true. she'll have another chance have another, true. no yeah, i don't she disagree better, she better have another chance yeah. after uh, her performance in and that then movie we have best supporting actress divine joy randolph from the holdovers i didn't see the movie but it looks very intriguing yeah and i then, wish i i wish i got a chance to see that one yeah. but i didn't uh you know who else got their first oscar go for it christopher nolan christopher nolan not only I does think, Oppenheimer win Best Picture, Best Director. I think oh, I, I think Oppenheimer is his is his best movie uh, yeah. for sure. 
I mean, just like the editing and and everything, like also all won the best acting. editing. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's just it really does stand out from his other movies, and I haven't seen all of them. I have, like I haven't seen uh, Tenant. I haven't seen Insomnia. Tenant was so confusing. I watched like half of it, and I was like, this is very weird. Um, but, but then yeah. you also have another best picture, best animated picture. Boy in the Heron. The boy in the Heron. Yeah, yeah. well deserved. I I liked Elemental and all, and I liked Spider Verse, but people were pissed boy, that Spider Verse didn't win. The Boy in the Heron is uh, is just better. Uh, Hayao Miyazaki is. Um, I mean, those movies are just all usually fantastic. It's rare you watch one and you're like, ah, oh, that didn't really stick with me. And, and I think and the Boy in the Heron, the story, and I prefer to watch. Uh, I prefer to watch. Uh, foreign movies in the language that they were uh, they were intended okay. in, I'm but the, the boy and the heron, the boy and the heron, I saw with an English with an English dub, dub and there were a lot of uh, prominent voice actors in it. It was Defoe, a Robert Pattinson, just to name such a, couple. a stacked cast. Yeah. So and, can you tell us a little bit about the plot of the movie? Yeah, it follows. I haven't seen it. I'm very it follows. Interested. It follows this boy who gets. Uh, it takes place in like a World War Two, post World War Two, like around that era of Japan, and uh, this boy gets relocated to um, his mother's uh, sister, so his aunt's place, and it's sort of like this mysterious house in like the woods, and there's like, you know, it's like. It's like a, it's a Studio Ghibli movie. There's like the weird, yeah. mysterious creatures and spirits and stuff, and it follows this boy and his rela- and and his relationship with this heron that he tries to track down, and it leads into this. I won't even say it. You should just okay. you should just watch it. It's just a, it's a, it was a great movie. It was it was uh, it's yeah, well it was deserved. Just, yeah, and there's a lot of references to other Hayao Miyazaki movies nice. in it because I believe this one is significant because I. Believe it his it's his last okay. one as like is that right? part of Studio Ghibli or the last one that he's writing. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of like Easter eggs and stuff to to the other movies. So 2023 was like Barbenheimer, but Barbie won one Oscar and it was only for best song. So it's kind of funny that the two horse race that was like Barbie Oppenheimer and it was like nothing for yeah, Barbie. Yeah, and and Barbie won in the box office department. I yes, one hundred percent. But and the I think I think yeah. Oppenheimer as like and I and I thoroughly enjoyed the Barbie movie. I would even go as far as to say I loved it. But Oppenheimer, I think, just from a writing and like, just in general filmmaking perspective, not to take anything away from Barbie, I I think Oppenheimer was just better across the board in that aspect and. I think uh, I think the first time wins for uh, Robert and Christopher were uh, were very well deserved and uh, Ludwig Göransson. I was going to talk about that. Your guy. Very well deserved yeah. as well. Uh, phenomenal composer. Hoyt van Hoytema as well did the key photography for the film and uh, I gotta say I'm I love this man's entire career. He has not shot a single bad movie in all of his time in Hollywood. Um, I have been in love with his filmmaking since the very start and you know what another, uh, what other movies has he done uh he did nope he did oh, um yeah. a bunch of wes anderson movies um what else one more obviously he did oppenheimer and uh i believe he did the photography for um uh dune 2 as oh. well wow yeah now were there any snubs that you guys want to discuss because i have a snub that i'm very very mad about I don't. I don't have anything in particular. So you take it. Tell Best visual it. effects. Godzilla minus one. Great movie. It shouldn't have went to it. Really? No. Yeah, I really. It should have went seen, to the creator. The creator was see, yeah. much much better. I'm like, seeing a lot of people who say the same thing, and I do like Godzilla minus one from the perspective of like, I like that the Godzilla monster has like. The more like a uh, throwback Toho mm-hmm. design, and I just like that it looks kind of older. But you could, tell. and I would take I would take that look over like Godzilla and Kong. I okay. think what that's looking like from the trailer, I, am I think that looks I think that looks bad. But I, I thought think... that the best part of Godzilla minus one was not the visuals. No, I thought no, it was no. the story. I thought it 
deserved more praise than they If we're giving ever. Oscars for, like, getting your money's worth, because they were on an extremely cheap budget. I don't know how much it was, but it was much cheaper than the creator. But I think you could tell it was, like, not the best CGI at parts. I think the creator was flawless with its CGI. So yeah. I, I felt like that was a snub. But I was excited to see that the Godzilla team was so excited. They were yes. wearing like their Godzilla merch, yeah, their they action were figures. Godzilla they had Godzilla like, shoes. I was yeah, happy for that. Like that's but... that's like that's pretty awesome shit. Right that's like there. the only thing that I was like, it should have went to the creator. But anything else you want to talk about the Oscars? I've gone all mine. All Let's mine just say out. next, like we we should be very very happy for Christopher Nolan because if Dune did not move because of the the strike, it would have been Dune's year. Oh, I don't know yeah. how you feel about that, but I feel like Doom would have got a lot of the awards that Oppenheimer won. Maybe. I mean, we'll have... We'll and have we'll see to next see. year, but I think it's probably better that it wasn't Dune versus Oppenheimer, because who would have known who would have won that fight? Hey, yeah. speaking of Dune... Yes, we can talk about Dune. Absolutely so wonderful film. We're going to go into non-spoiler thoughts first, and then we're going to have a spoiler section, and I'll leave like a timestamp on the YouTube video if you want to skip ahead. So yeah, what are your so non-spoiler thoughts Dune on Part Dune? Part 2, this one takes off like five minutes, five yep. minutes out of the first movie. Um, yeah, I wanted to, when we went, when me and Nick went to go see it, I wanted to watch Part 1 going right into Part 2, but I was, I was too, I was too sleepy. I had to take a nap before my Dune 2 viewing. But you had a so Dune I wasn't able to viewing view it, from last month. I did, yeah. yes, I did have my IMAX Dune 1 viewing, so I can say I still liked Part one better, I would say overall, like the atmosphere and like the way the story is laid out, like the conspiracy and just like the score. It's I think it's better in that regard. I I, I can I can see why people would like this one better. It's more action oriented. Uh, Not it's by more much. it's more spectacle oriented yes, as okay. well. Um, so I can see people who weren't like as into the first one or unsure about it, like preferring part two. But for me, I still prefer part one a little bit. But that being said, uh, Dune part two is phenomenal. This takes like the last third of the book and it makes the ending of the book less ambiguous. Like a lot of what's in here, I have not read the book dune but this is just from what i've gathered from people who are very knowledgeable on the subject a lot of this is like ambiguous material so i really have to give it to denis for like fleshing it out and making it like because to me it just seems like it fit in so well with everything else like i would have had no idea in the book it was just described as basically and then they fight yeah you know and i think i think i really got to commend him on the on the writing and the and just organizing the story and i mean it flowed like seamlessly yeah it was, it was almost three hours long but you couldn't really feel like that runtime compared to yeah. other movies yeah and i just want to talk spoilers honestly well, i just want to delve I, into the specific scenes like so honestly i could say the same thing i preferred part one not saying that i didn't like the movie but while watching it i was kind of like i thought this was supposed to be a super action-based like movie but I do like part one. I think the tone is the same, though, from movie to movie. Like, you can't even, like, separate the tone. But part one just felt, like, I don't know, grander or something like that. Yeah. Like, like the characters. It, it really is, like, the atmosphere. Yeah. Like, and the way, like, it, it's a shame we never got another, like, like really, really dark and cool, like, Bene Gesserit scene like we did with the the mother revealing her plan oh spo to, spoilers spoilers i'm but, talking about the first one oh, 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 yeah, oh, 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 yeah okay, okay. the the bene Gesserit mother talking to paul's mother jessica about what her plan is and the way it's shot on that dark bridge i mean that atmosphere i mean that's one of like the best movie scenes i've seen in a theater that i can remember seeing in mm. my entire life like and and it's it's a shame we don't get any like anything cool like on that side of the of the story in dune 2 however it does make up for it with um a lot of other cool scenes which we'll i get into. will disagree with you on this point once we get into the spoiler talk do you prefer part two i prefer part no. two i prefer part two by a mile but this is why i sat down and watched all of dune part one in its entirety after attempting and failing three times to finish it 
the week before I saw Dune Part 2. And granted, it wasn't on the big screen. It wasn't yep. like, you know, it wasn't in theaters. It was on a very small TV on my friend's couch. See, I saw Dune Part 1 on HBO Max the day it came out. And I hated the movie until I watched it in January, and I was blown away. It went from, like, a two-star movie to a five-star movie. They re-released so, it in January? Yeah, they re-released it. We yeah. saw it in Dolby. It was fantastic. Yeah. And it's crazy that the movie theater experience can change your opinion on a movie. Absolutely. See, like, I, I, never, I never watched it on streaming, but I don't think my viewing experience of it would be diminished at all. Because See, when you're the, in the Dolby Cinema, you're literally a part of Arrakis, where on streaming, it's like coming from your TV. It's not, like, as cool sound. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, mean, I guess, like, like, yeah, it would definitely be less grandiose, but, I mean, I think the story and the writing and the actual, like, you know, framing and direction mm. of the shots and everything would, would still be, like, incredible. I, I would, can't imagine my... My experience would be diminished, but you again, would, I've never tried to to do it. I've just the average person would probably, you know, not have a problem with a way, you know, the movie is presented on streaming as opposed to like, you know, seeing it in IMAX. But you know, uh, Nolan in a lot of his films, you know, the framing is different because. IMAX is shot in a different aspect ratio than, you know, what comes through your TV or your phone or your computer screen even. Um, so was, uh, was Doom 2 shot on IMAX? Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 it was. It was. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, so like a lot of these films, you know, being purpose shot for IMAX, you know, it does allow for, you know, different shots to be composed and like, you know, have things be a little wider, a little greater in perspective. And uh, that coupled with, like, the amazing soundtrack and the, you know, beautiful sound system, it felt, you know, the movie felt very heavy um, at times. Like, I could, uh, without going into spoilers, it, it just... Yeah, can we just go into spoilers? Yeah, yeah I mean, actually, can we, we stop, okay. stop dancing so, honestly, around yes, I just yes. want to get into it. Final thoughts, though, non-spoiler. I think it's a good movie, but I prefer part one. I'm going to yeah. put a timestamp on the YouTube video if you're listening on a platform like spotify or apple um sorry you're gonna have to listen to spoilers but let's talk about spoilers yeah, when i say when i say i prefer before i get into anything when i say i prefer dune 2 i mean like i would give dune 2 a 9.5 out of 10 and dune 1 like a 9.25 out of 10 okay i mean the other it's, way around. it's very yeah, close yes. yeah, yeah I it's, get it. it's very it's very close okay then um, let's talk spoilers yeah let's go all out i denny villeneuve is like one of the greatest directors in hollywood uh that scene that scene where uh, where Jessica drinks the um, mm. the worm juice, the worm yeah, juice, the, yep. the, the, the worm the worm the juice, serum. which which great idea yeah. for like a uh, like a mystical like kind of um, like religious like potion in a way. The fact that it comes from like I love that the Fremen have really harnessed like the sandworms, like yeah. the Harkonnens and everyone else. They fear the sandworms and the and to the audience they're presented as like so like larger than life but to the fremen i mean they've literally harnessed the the, the way the, they the capture it is amazing like the way that they're tackling the worms to get the juice yeah was crazy yeah yeah, yeah really uh, yeah it's it's really cool stuff and again it's because frank herbert i'm um, i'm sure like this was at least hinted at in in the book you know frank herbert he he had he had a very good knowledge of like ecology and religion and economics and all of these like fields he got a grasp on as a journalist he put into the book and i mean that's why this world is so well fleshed out but i'm i'm getting i'm getting off topic the scene where jessica drinks that water and 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 they realize oh she's pregnant yeah and that's how what a great scene that was i mean with the score and rebecca ferguson's acting and i i'm i'm a sucker for like an eye opening up visual like, you know, in a sci-fi okay, yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. the opening eye. The yeah. evil move. This is such a random thing to compliment them on, but he does that so well in Blade Runner 2049. The opening in that movie actually gives me the chills with the eye opening up yeah. shot. Yeah. I mean, he's and he's just so good in general at, like, capturing the large, grand-scale, like, epic visuals. Yeah. Um, and, he's, and he's so good at, like, accentuating the important elements of a story i like i mean the whole three hours of this thing flowed absolutely 
seamless. Yeah, I would say when it was starting to like get it not boring, but like okay, can we move on? They'd throw in an action sequence, and yeah. it would just like I don't know, push the yeah. movie. Um, I think like the movie is absolutely worth the three hours. Um, it's just such a roller coaster from start to finish. Um, immediately at the start of the movie, um, the sequence with the uh, the Harkonnen soldiers, um, where they're like floating up the cliff. Oh yes, that's you cool. You remember that? Yes, I... they're like climbing on the yeah. yeah. Packs, yes, and I love and I love the way it's shot, almost like. Uh, like like the like um the way they were like gliding up like just covering that whole like rock they were going yeah. up almost showing as if they're literally attempting to like cover Arrakis literally I thought yeah. that was that was shot really well it's excellent visual storytelling and like from that moment you just feel the tension and like the weight of everything that's going on for like the rest of the movie it immediately pulls you in and like. I don't know, I I was just immediately able to feel, like, this sense of dread, like, exactly yeah. where part one left off, and it just continues all through part two, because you realize this is the story of a boy who is destined to fucking yeah. mess who's, everything up. Yeah, who's, like, who who every single path in his life just all leads to the same thing, like, yeah. like being the leader of House Atreides, being the, the leader of the Fremen, or leader for lack of a, te- about a, uh, lack, for of lack a of a better, better term. term. You know, and, um, another element of, like, the so-called visual storytelling or, like, production design that I love is I love how, like, the the ships kind of look like locusts, like the, yeah. the ornithopters or whatever yep. they are. Yeah. I love that they look like little locusts. And I love that the spice harvesters in this one, they look like ticks yeah. almost going across. I thought that was great. That was awesome stuff. My favorite sequence was the arena scene. Yeah. I, I think the Austin Butler should get nominated. Yeah, the atmosphere on the The way the they Harkonnen changed like, the colors. Yeah, yeah. It was, black and white. It was, it was awesome. Some awesome of the stuff. best hand on hand combat I think I've ever seen in a movie. It was crazy. Um, I think, like I said, Austin Butler, I think, is going to get nominated. He was fantastic in the role. Yeah. Jumping to like the end you of the can... movie, though, when it's him versus um, uh, Timothy Chalamet. She, why am I forgetting? Yeah. Paul Trades, why am I, yeah. I was blanking for a sec, Paul. When you see them going, like, um, fighting. The scene, though, that made me so mad is when he was, like, stood up to Zendaya. Like, was like, you know what I mean? What are we yeah. Like, whereas, like, Zendaya yeah. was like... And that's, and that's what, like, you wonder about Paul. It's like, did he, did he really feel that way about Shani? Or mm-hmm. was... Chani just like another part of his like plight because in the beginning know? of the movie he's like I'll always be by your side or whatever or I'll love you forever yeah yeah but, I mean I I don't know I believe that this is one of those things where obviously Paul is being blinded by power but you know yeah he did just fucking like secure the bag from the Harkonnens well he didn't even think that he was like yeah. the chosen one I mean he did also he did also drink the um I'm trying to remember what specifically they called the water, water of life, life. Yep. yeah when he drank the water of life um you know what when like it very clearly has an effect on you because of just the amount of things you you know, knowing the history of mm-hmm. and the memories of every single reverend mother in the in the history of of the society, and I the mean, fact that the baby then also gains that knowledge. Yeah, and and becomes the the quitsaith, the uh, the habo. I don't remember exactly what Quizot it's called, but Hadarach. Yeah, and that oh, that scene where Rebecca like is like is like she speaks to me, Paul. <laughs> she will become the quitsaith Hadarach. Like that's Rebecca Ferguson is such a great actress. Like she's she's awesome. When she um, like started like having asides with the baby like in the middle of the movie, that that yeah. was just like that was so like it was, creepy. It, it was, was so, so good. It was oh my so god, everything good. about it was fucking so great. It was so good. My favorite sequence though is when Paul is talking and like saying how he is like the chosen one, and he's like giving this. Incredible speech. Yeah, I think that's gonna. Lisa Al Qaeb. And he talks of any and he refers to um, how how uh, Arrakis used to have a Fremen name, and he's just like, D- 
Dune. I thought that was oh. a I thought that was a great title drop, and Absolutely. I think it's cool that that's where Dune comes from. Yeah, like that's yeah. cool. My desert, like, <laughs> my Arrakis, <laughs> my Dune. <laughs> Baron Harkonnen. Oh my God! What a fucking unsettling bad guy. Oh, uh, what a weirdo. Ralta? Oh no, I'm talking or about Stella? Baron. Or Stellan? Yeah. 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 Vladimir Vladimir Harkonnen, a uh, just innovative bad guy. We need we need more just weird fucking fat dudes. Like watching him crawl up the steps while Paul like just yeah. makes his way into there. I thought it was very fitting that in his like plot to like take over the emperor and take his seat, he dies on the steps mm-hmm. on his way to do it. I thought that was very fitting. And I love speaking of the emperor. I love that shot where the Harkonnens meet up with them in the ship, and the shot of the lighting forming like a cross, and there's that really dark music, and it cuts to Florence Pugh, the daughter, and she's wearing like that like the chained, chained yep. garment. Oh my God, that was such an incredible scene. That whole that whole meeting between the Harkonnens and the and the and the and the emperor it was it was fantastic, especially with all the buildup in part one with. How the emperor like betrayed the Atreides. Now, um, did you like how it ended though, like the movie? Yeah, I I liked the ending. I thought it was uh I thought it was good with Paul uh with Paul accepting yep. his destiny not only Going with as the, the leader of House Atreides, but also as the leader of Arrakis. You know. Paul Atreides. It's what it was. Arrakis. It's what it was all building up to from the beginning, and I. I love how when he killed um, he killed uh, Baron Harkonnen, you know, stabbing him in the neck, and he says, "Grandfather, you died like an animal." It perfectly mirrored his his grandfather on his dad's side mm-hmm. dying to the bull. I mean, again, Denis Villeneuve, he's great at accentuating the important elements of the uh, of the story. I, I, it's just a, it, this movie is just so good. I, I like, can literally, I can just keep talking about it, but I'll let you guys uh, keep going. I like that at the end he goes, I'm going to take them to paradise. I, it could have been something else that he said, but it was Green something along paradise, those. Yeah. Because that's what Arrakis used to yep. be. So. Yeah. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya Taylor-Joy. Yeah. Only as a little the, bit of her. As the Quitzeth uh, Harak. Yes. 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 <laughs> Is that how you actually supposed to say it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm never gonna be able to pronounce that. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna read the encyclopedia. I'm gonna read the whole thing after this. Yeah, I I'm, I'm gonna go read uh, all read 27 Dune? books. Ooh. Now, I heard Dune Messiah is kind of controversial. Like, I don't know what happens in it, but I know it's gonna make people annoyed. I, so I, I wonder I think, if they're gonna go I with the book. I think there is a uh, very graphic material in it. I oh. think. I just know that I don't know exactly what happened, but the characters. They take a little twist in the movie. I don't know what happens. I'm going to read the first book and then I'll go into Messiah. Because Dune Part 1 and 2, the movie, is only the first book. They split the book into two movies. Yeah, there's a, and there's a, there's a whole... You could, you could study the Dune universe again like, a, like it's an encyclopedia. But like how many did he actually write? He wrote, I Was think, it? seven? Okay. I think his son and this other author have done... Most of the expansive works. Um, yeah, yeah so I'm I definitely gonna go in. Yeah, I don't know much about the the Dune universe. Um, I haven't. I, I've I've read sci-fi books here and there, but I've never I've never touched on Dune. When there's like a movie coming out, out that's now. based on a book, I try to like read the book after the movie because I don't want my expectations to be altered by reading the book. So. Yeah, if I read if I read um, Annihilation before I saw the movie, I would have been very disappointed in the movie. Oh, did you prefer the book? Okay. I used to be such a nerd about that kind of stuff. I I would always say like, oh, stick to the source material. But that's because I read. Sometimes Perc- you have to change it for a different medium. I guess so, but like that's because I read it's- Percy Jackson growing up, and that movie did that yeah. entire fan as base long, so as long dirty. As, if as long as they're doing the changes for a well, better story. Do you know some yeah. of the changes that were made for Dune Part Two? Uh, no. Well, not familiar. Chani's well, role in I, particular is a lot I know Joy from the book. It's supposed to like actually show up. She's not supposed to be like, like um, not a flashback or whatever. She's not supposed to like just be talking. She's supposed to like be born. Is what I'm trying to say. So they changed that up. I don't remember what else they changed. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, but um, I'm sure people got annoyed by that. I mean, 
again, as as long as it's for a better story, yep. I mean. I'm all for drawing this yeah. thing out. Like, if the first movie, if the first book can be divided into one and two parts, and, you know, everyone, like, in a general consensus is like, this shit's sick, then, like, fucking give me fucking a million more. I really don't care. Well, he's only me directing one more. Well, yeah, true. He's done after the third one. And that's an if. That's an if. And then they're gonna pass it off to someone else. I'm sure they'll ruin it. We'll you know, see. I was thinking about that on the way here. I hope that Dune is, like, a stepping point for sci-fi as a genre and, like, more people learn from it and just, like, stop fucking with older franchises. You know what I mean? Just, like, let a good thing be good and don't feel the need to build on it later in life. Yeah, yeah, watching, uh, watching, watching, like, good sci-fi and then watching, like, Star Wars, man. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I could not imagine trying to get myself to watch, like, any of the recent Star Wars shit after watching Dune. Because, I mean, it's just, like, Denis is someone who really understands, like, like, sci-fi and what makes it so great as a genre and... Just something Star Wars has been lacking on a long time. Last thing I want to talk about for Dune Part Two, that that pool in of uh, in the Fremen society where they store all oh, the yes. water yeah. from That's... every single member of their society, and they're talking about it, and it's sort of like an allegory for like like what resources we find important in our in our own real world. Just great stuff. I could just I could just think of every scene in the movie and just think of something as to what makes yeah, it so great. Like that great, one literally. scene where she cries and then he like wipes her tears like don't waste don't your waste water. Don't waste your yeah. water. Yeah, like yeah. and 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 he brings that up a lot and it's just it's very interesting how ingrained it is in their society like like don't waste your water because yeah. we literally you know have all you? we have is what's in our bodies yeah. like quite literally. Not you know? to change the subject entirely from this scene. But I remembered what I was going to disagree with you about in the pre-spoiler talk. Leia Seydu, her character, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, but Leia Seydu's character, she played the Bene Gesserit that tried to seduce Fade Rautha. I believe this was a much darker movie uh, than Dune 1 simply because of that scene, simply because of everything that went on on Gaiety Prime. Um, I loved that scene. I loved... uh, I just I love the Bene Gesserit. I believe that their presence in this movie makes yeah. the tone. And get they're ready. so TV. times darker. They're they're so interesting. Like the the idea that whether Paul or Fade route the would have won, either way their plan worked out. Yeah. Like it's it's it. They're very interesting. Well, they're get ready because they're making a TV show later this year on HBO Max. No the fuck they're what? Yes they are. They yeah. are. Yeah. What? About the Bene trailer Gesserit. comes out next week. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So is it is it Danny Villeneuve? Or? Nope. No, there's no nope. way it would be him. But I'm yeah. sure he's overlooking it. Yeah. I don't think he's actually... I don't think he's directing he's any of the He's probably going to be like executive producer or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure. They'll give him a credit. I need to look this up yeah. immediately. I haven't... I have what? So you have any other this. thoughts on Dune Part 2 before we move on? No, nope. sir. So there no, you sir. go. Go check it out. If you're going to give it out of 5? Out of 5? I, I like doing out of 10. Okay, out More of 10? specific... I'll give it a, like I said before, a 9.25. I have no criticisms. I believe this is a this is a 10 out of 10 movie. Okay. Um, you know, just everything I could want from sci-fi and more. I'm going to give like an 8.5. I think the first movie for me is like a perfect 10, though. So, yeah, that's our thoughts on Dune Part 2. Check it out. Yeah, go. Check it out. It, go, go I'm to sure a theater. you already have. Go to a Most theater. Of you guys. Don't, even, don't even wait for streaming. Go to a no, theater. No, go and see yeah, it in Dolby or IMAX. Go support your local cinema. Go and see it on a premium screen so then all the movie theaters have to upgrade to more premium screens. Because I want a Dolby in every single cinema. Yeah. Damn okay, right. Yeah. Okay. So, has there been any movies or TV shows you guys been don't watching? You, uh, don't you want to talk about uh, the recent Marvel news? <laughs> oh. That's true. Well, actually, there is a few things from Marvel. First thing is they were re-releasing every single live-action Spider-Man movie starting uh, April that. 15th yeah. with the Toby, that. Andrew, and Tom. I'm excited to go back and rewatch all the Tom movies. What's your favorite Spider-Man movie? So I used to I used to believe it was uh, Homecoming, but mm-hmm. I don't know. These days, I might be a Spider-Man 2 guy. Okay. 
I, you know, and I hate to sound, like, all contrarian and shit, but I am an amazing Spider-Man fan. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like, I just, you One know, or two? Uh, one, definitely okay. one. It's, it's overhated. Um, Emma Stone is Gwen Stacy. Great cast. A-okay. Great cast. A-okay. A-okay. And Andrew Garfield? Hell yeah, now, he did his thing. Have you always uh, felt this way, or did No Way Home change your perspective on Andrew? Oh, God, no, absolutely not. Oh, okay. I, I don't. I, I really don't even recognize No Way Home like that. Oh, I just I'm okay. Not hating, like sure, happy you liked it, and you know I was a I was a little I mean, starstruck. I was a little starstruck in theaters I too. I enjoyed I enjoyed in the in the movies, but I haven't I haven't. Yeah, I will say my favorite Spider Movie is Homecoming. I think it's the, a near perfect movie. I just love the way they actually dive into Peter being you know a high school student, and it's believable. Yeah. Yeah, like Andrew Garfield being like twenty eight or whatever he was, like yeah, I can. Oh tell no, this Toby guy. was older. Yeah, I know. Like you it's said crazy. Andrew. Yeah, I mean oh, both oh, of them. Oh, yeah, they yeah. were both. They were both. They were both old as hell. Like I could tell these are these are full grown adults, but Tom actually felt like a teenager. Yeah. And I will say the plot twist you know? though. When he opens the door about to pick up his date, Liz. And it's a yeah. Michael Keaton. Bro, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in a movie theater. I was shocked. So Michael, I'm so excited to go back and rewatch them. Yeah, the great villain performance from uh, Michael Keaton. So, the other Marvel news. So, Disney is in a really rough spot right now. Bob Iger ran my dog over with a car. <laughs> Don't. And uh, he owes me Keep money. my CEO's name out your mouth no i this is this is entirely true i have it on my ring doorbell <laughs> bob Iger hit my dog with his car and he laughed in my face about it and he owes me a great sum of money so that's what's up i'm a big disney fan you know that and there's this guy that's trying to take down bob Iger. now me. the guy that's taking down bob Iger, me nelson pelts he has another guy on his side Bob Iger, my mother warned me. My, your mother warned me of my coming. I believe his name is Ike Permoner. I could be wrong about that. He used to work as the head for Marvel. Now, Marvel fired him because Kevin Feige didn't like him. So now he's trying to take over and get rid of Bob Iger. And George so, Lucas is involved somehow too. Yes, George Lucas came out today backing Bob Iger because when Disney bought Star Wars, they mostly gave like the money that he would get for Star Wars in Disney shares. And and that was a that was a lot of money George got for Star Wars, so that's a lot of shares in the Disney yes. company. So, so he he's has, backing Bob he Iger. Does, he does have uh, he does have a, a pretty decent say. Yeah, on, so by him backing Bob Iger, I think it could also influence other shareholders on what side that they want to go on. Mm-hmm. But Bob I, Iger also came... Oh, sorry. I firmly believe that there is, like, somebody from Disney pointing a gun at George Lucas's head <laughs> right now, telling him, yeah, yeah, tell yeah, him about back, Bob Iger. Yeah, tell him about good old Bob. Bob Iger for me. Yeah. yeah. So, also, something that happened was Bob Iger came out and announced that they're quietly getting rid of projects, Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars projects. They also announced about that... damn time, you know? Yeah. Some movies like Ant-Man 4... Captain Marvel 3, we're not ever going to see those movies because they didn't perform well at the box office, which I don't care what anyone says, I like Quantumania. I didn't like the Marvels, but I like Quantumania, so I'm kind of sad we're not going to be getting an Ant-Man 4, but yeah. they can also show up in an Avengers movie. Yeah, Quantumania sucked ass, so <laughs> this doesn't surprise me. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I've seen anybody like... Other than you liking Quantumania. I, and a few other people here and there, but I mean... It felt like a Star Wars movie in the Marvel Universe. It felt like, like all the most recent like Star Wars and Marvel projects. It just seems that everyone who watches them goes, I don't really well, like this. I was actually kind of excited for Kang. I mean, I don't support John the Majors, but I'm kind of sad that it seems like they're going to be switching their directive for Avengers 5. They are still going to have Kang in the movie, but not as big of a role. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess I just wasn't really excited for him because even though the performance was good, it's well, like... Well, you gotta we got to watch him, Loki. That's your problem. We got him, we got him in, in one movie and, like, it wasn't a good movie and it wasn't an interesting or intriguing movie, so it was just kind of a good performance that, that fell on my deaf ears, I'm afraid. So, so they I also... I am pretty excited... For the new Deadpool movie. Of course. Who isn't? I, Are you kidding me? You know what? Seems like it's going to be a, a good also, time. also, 
Maybe not the return to form that everybody wants, but... It's the closing chapter of the Fox universe. You got your rated or Deadpool it. making fun of Disney. It. It's going to be great. It's going to be the... I think it's going to be the first movie of 2024 that makes a billion dollars. I think it's going to be the first Deadpool movie because neither Deadpool 1 or 2 made a billion dollars. I think this one is easily going to get Did that. Did they get anywhere near a Yeah, I'm pretty dollars? sure Deadpool 2 got very close, like 700, 800 I, million. I don't think Deadpool 3 is going to make a billion dollars. Yeah, I there's mean, just I, no way. Do that many people still give a shit about Marvel like that? The last one For came Deadpool? out... For Deadpool? You think the, the trailer one, was the huge? The last one came out in 2018. I don't think... I don't even think that trailer has uh, half a billion views. I'll put $100 probably. on it. Deadpool, you know what? Deadpool had his moment in the sun. You know, he... Yeah, I mean, the I, people, I gotta say, he overstayed his welcome just a little bit. Because yeah, I mean, if you're still people, obsessed with Deadpool at this day and age and, like, fucking 2024, like, get another hobby, man. I gotta yeah, tell you. Yeah, I mean, Deadpool 2 came out in, what, like, 2018? May yeah. of 2018. It was right during Infinity War. Yeah, I mean, people people who are still fond of the character will go see about a billion dollars. Yeah. No way. And you know what? I, I just... I can only hope that this movie yeah. is like a fond send off for a character that at one point yeah, no, like it's, it's not a send off. Care about. Yeah, like 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 normal like non movie loving like normal no. heads are not going to be showing out for Deadpool three like it's Barbie or something. But you know, you just hope it's good. You, yeah, you just hope it's like, hey, that was a, that was an alright movie. Good for good for yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Always trust him, Ryan Reynolds. Does like his marketing fantastic. He's hands on this project. They're going to be using the, you know, <laughs> demolishing the Fox universe to their advantage. Anthony, I bet, I bet you, like, just kind of, like, sit up at some nights oh. just, like, watching Mint Mobile ads. <laughs> I do! <laughs> Bro, they're so good! How does he do it, man? <laughs> no, I'm How does this guy keep fucking doing it? Another <laughs> great fucking Mint Mobile ad. Ryan, it's you've, incredible. Ryan, you've, you've done, done it again. <laughs> you've done it again. <laughs> they are so good. Go, I didn't literally subscribe to his YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I watch those Mint Mobile ads when they come out. Oh my I'm god! Not there was this ad that came out a couple of weeks ago where they were like promoting, um, like security, and they used the guy from the room, Tommy Wiseau, to promote it, and it was such a great advertisement. Oh, that's that's Kino as fuck, dude. That's I mean, so I mean, that's a good cameo, but I will never refer to an advertisement as that's just incredible. I did not. How pick, did they do it? I did not pick Verizon. I did not. Is that, is that, is that, I did not. Is that how it went? Oh, hi, Bob. Listen. <laughs> you go over. I will put his videos on after this podcast, and you guys are going to love it. I mean, if, it. We're talking mid, about, mid, if, we're ta- if we're talking about uh, funny celebrity ads, have you guys been seeing the Mark Wahlberg uh, prayer <laughs> ads? Oh, what? He's been on the, the, this prayer the ad with oh, this God. guy who looks like Jesus, and he's like, What's up, I'm Mark Wahlberg. Come do a prayer with me. Listen, before we start shouting out all these all these big conglomerates, Mint Mobile cut us a check right now. Yeah, this they, is, they should. This is, the yeah. this is the best Mint publicity. This is the best publicity you've the best had ads. all year. I got AT and T, but I will easily switch over. Fifteen dollars a month? Are you kidding? You can keep your phone number. <laughs> You're just giving Dude, them free advertising. Uh, nothing's free. Nothing is free. I'll do Ryan, anything for free. Ryan, you got my number. You got my number. Call me, baby. Does he? Can, <laughs> I don't yes. Know. Yes, he does. Yes, you do, Ryan. And if you don't, uh, you got my Twitter. Ryan, when Deadpool 3 makes a billion dollars, you're sitting right over there. We got you on this podcast. I got your back, bro. Ryan, if Deadpool 3 makes a billion dollars, um, we'll talk. Ryan, if Deadpool 3 makes a billion dollars, I will forget that uh, Green Lantern and Blade Trinity and already, R.I.P.D. exists. He technically killed in the Deadpool universe. That's true. It's okay, true. so <laughs> back to Bob Iger. Other oh, yeah, project- that's really <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Other projects that he canceled. I'm going to assume he probably got rid of a ton of Star Wars stuff because I feel like everything they announced from Star Wars is there gets any, canceled. Is there any, like... Has there been any Star Wars project discussed in the past five years that has actually been made other than the ones like, you know... The obvious? Acolyte is coming out, I believe, in May or June, which is going to be a TV show. Um, you have the new Ray movie that they're going to be making, which who knows? I thought that was going to be canceled. I think they're going to roll with it, especially since how much the sequels have a part in like the theme parks. I feel like they might roll with it. Yeah, um, man. I mean, when's the last time a Star Wars like movie or TV show has been beloved? <laughs> Episode Why 9. Is- why does okay, Daisy okay. Ridley not have more of a career? Can because, we talk about that? Because, because Star Wars. Because, <laughs> because Star Wars. I'm um, you also have Patty Jenkins' um, Rogue Squadron movie, which 
was supposed to get canceled, but then they then she announced like two weeks ago that she's doing it again. So who knows with that? Uh, we'll see though. I'm sure we got the Mandalorian movie coming. You know they're gonna do that because hey, come see Mandalorian and Grogu, and then finish the rest of their story on Disney Plus. You- yeah, I mean, I I liked uh, I watched the first eight episodes of Andor and I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it just I don't know. It didn't really have the same power love that for show. Me. But I was kind of bored through it. I mean, season two comes out, I believe, at the beginning of next year. So I'll go back and rewatch season one. But it wasn't really appealing to me. It was like HBO, but set in Star Wars, if that makes sense. I loved Mandalorian season one. I was very happy to see that, you know, that they made a new character, you know, that really fit into the world of Star Wars the way that he did. Um, I I thought it was a great take on, like, the uh, the dark underbelly of uh the star wars universe um i just really don't like where they went with the character you didn't like season two or three Uh, i liked uh, he had the dark saber that was pretty dope season two is when i would say it goes two one then three for my ranking really yeah i mean season one was magical like that that gave me like such hope for the future of the franchise that uh that that cgi young face mark hamill is some eerie uncanny valley what's shit. even funnier is someone then remade it and made it look better it looked better and then disney hired him because it was so good oh my god yeah. <laughs> so yeah see like yeah the the weird dh mark hamill was weird and i don't know why they just made him such a pivotal part of the show either like that why? Why do that? Like, because, why do weird shit? Because in the in- because you could just trot out all the old Star Wars shit like it's a museum. Because artifact. this yeah. enormous galaxy only revolves around the Skywalkers. That's it. Yeah. No one else is important in this world. Yeah, it's literally what Dune is getting at. How you have this giant expansive universe and it all just revolves around the same thing. It's literally what Star Wars is doing. We'll see what happens. It's Acolyte. I know the trailer came out. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't watch the trailer. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I like the sequels. You like episode 9, actually. I do. Oh. I do. I should have brought that up. I'm an episode 9 fan. I'm an episode 9 do fan. Do you love it like me? Uh, I, I, it's, it's Star Wars. It's a Star Wars I movie. love Palpatine, so the fact that they brought him back, I was so excited. I, dude, Palpatine's a great villain. What do you want me to say? Like, he's on screen. I'm going to be Dare like, I say, the best character in Star Wars. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Hot take? Is that, is that, 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 that's is that real, really how you that, feel? That, that's a real take for me. I think Palpatine's my favorite character in all of Star Wars. See, uh, see <coughs> episode 9, I mean, it's not it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but if, if my biggest compliment to a movie is I like the visual effects, it's not getting very high praise <laughs> from me. It was, listen, that's, that's another reason why I, I like episode 9. I gotta say, it was the most visually stunning out of all the uh, sequel when movies. The end where he's like releasing unlimited power and the bass boost in the theater. Yeah. That was one of the craziest bass boosts I ever heard. It was, okay. uh, it was I mean, yeah. dude, we're, we're praising the bass boosts in this movie. What are we even talking about? What? I, I think we're, I think we're like appreciating that scene I mean, for like wait, wait, something wait. that it isn't. Like, we're, we're, okay, like, yeah, the base boost was crazy. He fucking disarmed an entire rebel fleet <laughs> by, like, pointing his hands at the air and you're focused on the base boost? Yes! The base boost, that was, like, what did it for you? Yes! And he fucking oh, wait. shot lightning oh, no, just, out of his hands! I just feel like the the writing and the, and the characters all sucked. And we're talking about... The base boost Fine. was Do you want to know what I actually love about the movie, which is going to get so many people pissed off? Raylo. I love Raylo. <laughs> I was so happy when they kissed on screen. I think I was the only one in my theater who was clapping. I think oh, it's just so funny Christ. that you can tell in the movie that it was just... The direction the story was building up to was not supposed to go there at I all. will say, I wish Ray turned to the dark side. I think that would have been a really cool narrative. Is if then the two sides switched. And so she's officially, like, a gray Jedi now? Is that what she is? Or, like... She's a Skywalker. What do you mean? Oh, she's a Skywalker. Yeah, yeah that's just what horrible. What do you do? It's, like, I'm not the biggest last Jedi defender or anything, but I think... I, I hate Rise of Skywalker alone for just taking everything in that movie and just unwriting it. Like, all those story threads that had potential 
and that were building up over the course of not just that movie, but the one before. So if I have to critique Disney, I think they should have had an overall plan for their trilogy, not just do it movie yeah, by movie. And, and, and hand it to like that, 20 different directors. And because of that, The Rise of Skywalker is just, it's not a good movie. The writing, you know the writing sucks. The characters suck. I mean, the general plot of elements, they all suck. For the reason that and you don't like it is the reason that I, like, I'm alright with it. It's because, you know, I wasn't necessarily interested in any of the plots that were presented for the previous two movies and you know that's not to knock on you know other the other two sequel uh films just because like you know i i like episode nine and i'm not gonna knock on anybody for you know enjoying some films that admittedly aren't up to par with any of their predecessors but you know i think because episode nine is so different than everything that came before it just makes it a lot easier to tone out the previous two films which See, i didn't enjoy so i guess I'm i guess i can that under, better like I, by default i guess i can understand that and i'm not like a huge sequel fan or anything i mean there were there were plenty of stories going on there that i didn't really care too much for but i mean it would have been nice to get like a little bit of i it doesn't feel like the finale of a nine movie saga, does it? <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, not. It doesn't not really, feel like no. the finality of a trilogy. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, absolutely not. I no, mean, so, you're entirely yeah, right. I I don't know. It just I didn't I didn't get a good I didn't get any good writing. I didn't get any grand spectacle. I got a few good action scenes and a good bass boost. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, what's your own doing was for me? So crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what was your What's your favorite Star Wars movie of all time then? I mean, I know it's a basic answer, but I would have to go with Empire Strikes Back. Okay. I mean, just so many great, iconic scenes. It's just so... It, it's just a great movie. For me, it's episode three. And then episode nine. Revenge, it always goes back Revenge, baby. Is that yours too? Yeah, revenge. Episode nine and three. Let's go. Ugh. I, I will say my... I can't remember. Yeah, well, you go a little harder for episode nine than I okay. do. I don't want. I don't want anybody thinking like I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve right now. Then, also, like, I'm not gonna lie. I sold my soul to Mickey Mouse, so of course I'm gonna like the sequel, except for episode eight. Episode eight sucks, but um, yeah, I like the sequels. He likes the sequels, except for the one that he doesn't like. Yeah. Yeah. You know who does like episode eight though? Our friend Joey. Our friend Joey. Yeah. Our friend Joey. I yeah, mean, I'm also I'm also not crazy about episode three. <laughs> With that being said, I do love episode three just because there's so many memes and <laughs> it's a large part of my childhood. But if I'm if I'm looking to sit down and watch a quality thing of Star Wars, I'm not I'm not going prequels or sequels to be real with you. Fun fact: Episode three was the first movie I ever bought on DVD. Really? Yeah, Let's but I had uh, had five dollars, picked it straight out of the bin. I'm like, Mama, I want this one. Nice. Wow, Empire in that the is Garden. a good bin. I watched that it on my choice. PS2. I watched it on my PS2. That is a good choice for a first ever DVD. Goes back. Goes way back. So I guess that's our rant on Star Wars. Oh, thank yeah. you. We had to get it out of our systems at some yeah, point. Yeah, May the 4th is there's coming a, up. There's a Star Wars debate due soon. I got takes about Solo well, that listen. will uh, blow the roof all <laughs> off this place, man. <laughs> we'll do that for May do the 4th, we have 4th, enough time for the podcast yeah. for that? May the 4th. We'll, we'll wait for May, May the, the 4th. 4th. Maybe we'll go back and rewatch them. I don't know. But... Talking about sequels, you know what else is coming out? What? Toy Story 5, Frozen 3, Zootopia 2. Moana 2. Moana 2. Yeah, Disney's Who just cares? trying to play the hits with them. They're like, please, God, please. Baba, you're just on his knees. Please pocket. give us money. We are in desperate yes. need of your money. It's... Yeah, man. <laughs> they, no one even remembers Strange World, which was like their <laughs> last animated movie that came out. Dude, I mean... Uh, Anthony, but, are you scared of the uh, the Disney Empire collapsing and the fact that you may be out of a career a, very soon? It's not really associated with movies, but I could go on a tangent over how Universal's about to beat Disney's ass, but I won't get into that. But, Dude, I mean, Frozen 3, I'm not looking forward to that. Zootopia 2, the first one's okay. Moana 2, I love Moana, but I gotta say I can't... I can't get excited for the sequel given all the stuff with The Rock and all the live action and stuff. And how it was supposed to be like, a TV show originally. Yeah, like, I mean, what is... Whatever happened to, like, you know, straight-to-DVD sequels? Like, well, that's what Disney Plus was going to be used for. That's what they were doing for Moana 2. It was supposed to be a Disney Plus original series that they're re-editing into a movie. Yeah, but, like, why even, like, promote this stuff in the first place? Like, why yeah, not? Why not? Why else? Money. 
I because they've shown that anytime they try to create something original, it just never goes over well. But so they, they do have Frozen, which becomes one of their highest, like the probably the biggest franchise ever. Yeah, and that's why they're just going back to playing the hits now. Yeah, yeah like. They, why not, like, you know, invest more time into, into like, like, making... making, like, actual good stories and getting, like, auteurs and to Talk about something. last year with Elemental from Pixar. Fantastic movie that they could build on. I mean... Um, why build on it? Yeah. Why I build mean, on it? Let a good thing I be mean, good. Yeah, let a good thing be good. I if mean, there's a good story that justify a sequel, then I think it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, they... What happens is they, 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 they say that, then they release all these sequels, and they're mediocre, and then they just keep bringing out more. I, I mean, feel like people don't realize that in order for a sequel to be good, it needs to like be able to stand on its own as a movie. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you were to, for some odd reason, start off in this series without, you know, looking at anything previous to it, you know, you should walk away, you know, saying, like, wow, the this movie, like, this singular movie, removing anything from or after it, this was, like, such a great moment. This okay. was an important movie. It needs to be as important yeah. as the film that preceded it. You think and Inside Out 2 will be movies, that? None of these movies feel like they're going to be important by any means. By any means. Inside Out 2 comes out in June. Dude, I so mean... You know, you know the live action Pixar remakes are coming in in the coming years. Oh, they're coming. Oh, maybe Incredibles. They are on the way, man. Oh, they're ready for a live way. action Toy Story. Oh, yeah, man, they're on the way. I know for a fact. Oh they're no. On the way. Um, I mean, they're doing Austin, How to Train Your Dragon. Austin Butler as is Woody. Woody. Yeah, and let's see oh. who would they have as uh, as Buzz? It would be Tim like, Allen. <laughs> If, no, it, Chris Evans. It would be like it would be like some like character actor, like some meme actor or something. Michael Sarah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, um, what do you? Do you what? actually think they would make a live action Pixar movie? Because why, why wouldn't, wouldn't they? they? they because fucking, they are they've known for computer. everything else. They've they've made. I mean, they're making live action remakes of movies that came out ten years ago. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna Dream get Works to their other to, studios at at some point. DreamWorks is doing How to Train Your Dragon remakes. I mean, you know, live action. Yeah. Are they? Yeah, they are. I'm they learning are. so much today. Listen, I have never seen the How to Train Your Dragon <laughs> movies, but I have it on my radar. I have it on like my queue. I definitely am going to. I gotta say, I I don't believe you're missing much. First really? one's first one's pretty nice. Yeah, first one is worth the second greatest one's salt. good. Third one's eh, well, I'll give it a watch and let you know. Third one's giving, Heck up. Third one's giving big uh, Wally energy. A lot of Wally ripoff vibes. Mm. In How so, to Train Your Dragon? Yeah. That's sick, actually. I want to watch that. We'll see how Disney and these sequels turn out. I'm excited. I'm not really excited for Inside Out 2, but you know I'm excited for Frozen 3 and Toy Story 5. I will be there. I'll be the oldest man in that theater. I don't care. <laughs> I'll be crying. I'll be singing. I'm so excited. I hope they give Kristoff another power ba uh, power ballad like Lost in the Woods. Did you like Frozen 2? Oh, I love it. Are you kidding me? If I'm not your guy, where am that. I if we're not together <laughs> forever? <laughs> now I know you're my true north. I will stop singing so I don't make your ears bleed. So Very good. Yeah, I think we should do another podcast talking about sequels. Sequels? Yeah. <laughs> We gotta do like more of these. We well, go back. Good, and... good versus bad sequel. Cars two. I'm so excited for our Cars rewatch. You have oh, no idea. Man. That will be in the future. We are we'll planning see. on that. I'll, okay. I would, I would, I would rewatch Cars. I would sit down and rewatch Cars, and then like stomach Cars two. So I'm currently trying to rewatch every single animated <laughs> Disney movie and rewatching all the Marvel movies. So I'll get to Pixar and I'll Star Wars at another point. So with that being said, our very long Disney tangent. Has there been any movies that you guys have seen recently that you'd like to discuss? I know you have some. So, I have a few things I would like to discuss. Okay. First, I've been watching uh, the, the beloved TV show, The Sopranos. I'm okay. on, I finished season two. Uh, shout out Alik Sakharov, director of photography. He's also worked on Ozark. Very good DOP. Uh, he does the DOP for The Sopranos. Uh, excellent writing, excellent performances. Uh, great show. Can't wait to watch it. Uh, the remaining seasons. Livia is my favorite character. 
Um, and I also want to talk about two horror movies I've seen. One was Night, Night Swim with, uh, with Nick. We saw that uh, in theaters. And I rewatched <laughs> the Netflix movie Apostle, uh, which is another horror movie. And I want to talk about the two. Uh, so the first one, Night Swim, not as bad as I was expecting, given how boring and lame the trailers were. But at the same time, a horror movie about a pool is not a lot for a <laughs> one hour, 56 minute experience. So, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, the cast was like, it's that uh, Kurt Russell's son. Uh, Why Russell? Yeah. Why Russell? And it had a uh, uh, Mike's uh, Mike's uh, daughter-in-law from uh, from Better Call Saul. Um, great actress, uh, and she gave a great performance in the movie. A uh, few scary scenes here and there, but um, any jump scares? A few. A few. Not for me then. Um, I'm gonna give yeah. my opinion on this, but first I'm gonna get some water. Yeah. I don't like horror movies, so this is all you. You see, the thing with horror is that horror is a very subjective film genre, and, you know, all genres are, but horror is more so because, you know, certain things scare certain people and certain things don't, and there definitely is an audience for those people who got the heebie-jeebies, like, during their night swims, like... Like, or, or having, like, a fear of, like, swimming in the water at night, like... There's definitely an audience for this movie out there, but it was it was not for me. I'm gonna give it a four out of ten. Not as bad as I was expecting, but uh, yeah. The trailer just, looked like it's one of those cheap. Yeah, it's it's one of those horror movies that they were really stretching the the premise of to try and make a so movie. So they could have cut the runtime a little shorter. It would have been a cool short film, honestly. It would have been a cool short film more than anything, but yeah, like having a feature length film where you're fitting in character arcs, like definitely stretched a little thin. So who wants to hear what I have to say about Night Swim? Go for it. Go for it. That was one of the worst movies I have <laughs> ever seen ever in my life. Ooh. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's like no one gave me a reason to care about any of their characters. Uh, Wyatt Russell, um, he played an alright asshole dad, um, you know, you really didn't like him from the beginning, and, uh, seeing him get worse over the movie was more so irritating than telling of there being anything wrong with him. Well, I think, I think it made sense given that the pool was his agent to sort of getting better and recovering and fighting his... His, uh, his disease to try and play baseball again while he was losing sight of his family. I think that aspect of the story made sense. I don't think it was stupid and for no reason. No, of continue. course. Of course. No, it, I'm saying it had a point, but it's like just, I don't know, wasn't doing it for me. Like, you know. Well, yeah, because I'm not saying the I premise, could write that the premise character any was. Better. The premise was very much nothing. Like, if it was, like, a higher stakes story and it wasn't, like, vague pool demons. Yeah. Like, I, I think I would have been more invested in this, like, that's, this story arc that had potential. That's really, that's really what it is. It's, like, the antagonist itself being the pool is already such a contrived way to create an antagonist. Um, I feel like, you know, like, starting off the plot with, like, oh, these two kids that died in the 90s or whenever it happened, it's like, yeah, it's just right off the bat, you're just kind of fed up. You're like, okay, this is a pool that kills people and it's going to be the same thing every single time. Every time. It doesn't, doesn't get any scarier. It, like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe you had to have, like, a phobia of pools as a kid to enjoy it. Like, I remember being like, oh, I can't swim. I simply won't go in the water. Like, I, there was just no way it to make a been, pool scary for it me. It would have been a, uh, it would have been like a, like a cool, like, little short film. Like, you went outside. To, had, like, a cool little idea for a quick movie. You got, like, creepy shots out there. Got a little, like, I think, I think that would have been cool, but... Stretching it out into two hours was definitely a little ridiculous. Can I ask a spoiler question? Yes. Yeah. Is the pool, like, 
a person or like how does the pool it, become the, the pool pool was built on top of a well where you it was groundwater like... it was groundwater and supposedly yeah. groundwater is like you know holy and like sacred or like it's magical yeah and that's what they use in like wishing wells and stuff like i mean you throw a penny or something into this pool which is groundwater uh it grants a wish but at the cost of but this, Somebody's but this life. specific one, but this specific one had demons in it, yeah. and I think getting uh, Stacy from Better Call Saul and having her character do nothing waste of a talented actress. She's yeah. she's phenomenal. Sure, she got a paycheck though. I mean, probably <laughs> not much. Is anyone getting a paycheck <laughs> from this for, movie? For Night Swim? Like, I mean, I'm. It definitely did good things for. I mean, the economy. It got, gave a lot of people jobs, but it didn't give me too much entertainment. <laughs> didn't give you any joy. That was Blue um, House, correct? They made that. They made that film. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. Bloom House, just please yeah. step it up. Just give horror a better name. Five Nights at Freddy's too. I want to talk about another horror movie I watched. Uh, Apostle, uh, Netflix original. I know it's on Netflix. I'm pretty sure it's an original. Uh, I I had the chance to rewatch this. I watched this a few years ago, and um, I uh, I got together with uh, with one of our friends, uh, and and we we rewatched it. And I gotta say, fantastic movie. B- does horror like in in every way better than than Night Swim? It's it's about this this uh, this man who has to go to this remote island inhabited by a religious cult in the early 1900s to uh respond to a ransom letter for his sister and he goes to this island and you find out more about the inner workings of it and the cult and like their religious philosophies and everything and just the shots and all the different characters and their motivations it is genuinely creepy and unsettling and if you guys have seen the movie and know what i'm talking about the heathen's chair scene oh my god it makes me want to throw up that is a horrible way to go yeah well i like it (laughs) yeah you you should give it a watch a great movie i'm not gonna say anything more about it because if you like horror movies you should just go watch it if you don't like horror movies you should go watch it apostle on netflix fantastic (laughs) movie here is a sentence i never thought i would say I'm very excited for that new uh, Sydney Sweeney horror movie. Yeah, I want to check that one out as well. I also want to check out that new uh, David Dasmalchian horror movie. I'm a big David Dasmalchian fan. Great actor. I know that name. What was he? Polka Dot Man. He was in Ant-Man movies. He was in in Prisoners. He was in The Dark Knight. Yes, yes, yes. Who was he? He was black hair. He was the guy who Harvey Dent beats up in Prisoners. He uh, He was in Dune. He was one of the. Um, he was one of the Harkonnens yes, in yes. Dune. I swear to God. I he know. was the third guy to uh, David Batista. Have you ever seen Ant Man? No. Have you ever I... seen Prisoners? No. He was the, the main guy. Suicide Squad. Yes. The he played Polka Dot Man. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he oh, was in yeah. the Dark Knight. He's the he's the fake Joker that uh, Harvey then slaps around. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. He's such a good actor. He's he's phenomenal. He's he's gonna be in a new horror movie. Very excited to see that one. Is that the one with the uh, the tarot cards? No, it's the one where it's like late night with the devil, and it's like oh, the, oh my god, yeah. yes, David yes. Dasmalchian, man, he's the man. That looks interesting. He's that the looks man. Interesting. Any other movies you've watched that you want to discuss? Um. Oh, I've also been watching uh this show on HBO Max, Tokyo Vice, with uh, I've heard Ansel of it. Elgort and Ken Watanabe. Uh. It's based. It's it's loosely based on a true story of a uh, je- of a American crime reporter who uh, was living in Tokyo and he got a chance to go on the police beat and there's like this kind of story with the yakuza and there's like this nightclub they go in and out of very very interesting story. Um, yeah, good good show so far. Cool cinematography, cool music, and it takes. I like that it takes place in like the early two thousands. Very cool aesthetic of Tokyo. Any movies or TV shows you've been watching? Uh, not recently, but I will check out that uh, that Tokyo Vice. That does sound dope. Yeah, so, dope show. Really good music. Like it's got like that, like that. Uh, it's like an update on the kind of Miami Vice. It's got like that kind of like electronic, like, like synth, <laughs> synth wave kind of bounce. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, Ken Watanabe, he's always great when he shows up in something, and he plays like this, uh, this like seasoned uh, police detective. Great performance from. Oh, him. hey, speaking of Ansel Elgort, um, I watched West Side Story for the first time. The new one or the older one? The new one with Ansel yep. Elgort. That yeah, was, good. Oh, it right, was, right. was it good? I. I liked it. I liked it too. I liked it quite a bit. I, I didn't. Mean, I didn't get a chance to see that one. Steven Spielberg yep. did that, yeah. right? I heard it was pretty good. Rachel Zegler's in it. Very, very um, visual. It's crazy Debose. how like varied of a career he has. He's done. He's done now a musical. He's done horror movies. He's done science fiction. He's done historical dramas. Yeah. Building up he's, that resume. It's it's crazy, man. He's he's great. So a movie that I saw. I saw Kung Fu Panda Four. Yeah, yeah. I was looking forward to that one because I think the 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 first two Kung Fu Panda movies have a lot of artistic m- merit, and I'm very nostalgic for them. And I just think they're they're good movies. I only watch, I, but I gotta say the trailers for four have not been looking great. Reviews have not been looking great. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I, I only saw have. the first one when I was a kid, and then to prepare for the fourth one, I rewatched the first one, and I watched the second and third one for the first time. I saw the fourth one. I can't lie. I think it was my favorite one out of the four. But take that with a grain of salt because I honestly don't think I'm a fan of this franchise. It doesn't really work for me. So the fourth one was very different from the first three. And I think that's why I may have liked a little bit more than the other three. But um, it's okay. It's definitely nothing great from DreamWorks. I mean, in the last year alone, or the last two years, Puss in Boots 2, The Last Wish, Trolls 3, tremendously better. But um, Kung Fu Panda 4... If you're a fan of the franchise, go and watch it. They do leave out some of the characters, though, from the first three movies, so it's yeah, definitely... Yeah, Furious uh, 5, I mean, yeah. love, uh, love the franchise. They want to save some money. They, they don't want to pay Angelina Jolie yeah, or Chuck hard, or whatever. They're hardly even real characters, so if, if we're being honest with ourselves. Yeah. So, I mean, it's okay. Also, I watched this really weird movie on Prime called Ricky Stenicki with John Cena. I could see so many trailers for that. <laughs> the movie was so, so funny in the first act and then the second act was not that good at all. I like, but, I, I, I doubt that's a real movie. I just, I, I've seen trailers <laughs> for it. I know like this is a thing that exists and I know if I look hard enough I can find it somewhere but I just doubt that those people were ever in the room together making this movie. <laughs> Zach Efron and John Cena is such a like a weird combo. Uh, I don't want to believe it. I just don't want to believe it that cast exists. John Cena had a very <laughs> funny sequence of him in Atlantic City. I don't want to spoil it, but I was laughing out loud. So funny. He's he's singing some songs, but with a little twist. Did anyone see in the trailer when John Cena peed himself? <laughs> I've seen that trailer a hundred times on YouTube. So I, I, I think it's very funny when John Cena pisses his pants. That's comedy right there. That's comedy gold. And then also, I've just been rewatching a lot of Marvel stuff. I'm halfway through Phase One. Been rewatching all of the animated Disney movies. I'm all done with the 1930s and 40s movies, and I'm on my way in the 1950s. But um, how that's... did Zac Efron go from the Iron Claw to Ricky Stenicki? <laughs> I mean, I'm what, sure. What changed? Amazon's <laughs> money. They were like, take this dumb truck of money, and uh, perhaps, yeah, perhaps that's how it worked out. I mean, honestly, I would give it a watch <laughs> if you're looking for a, a comedy, relax, have a bottle of wine or whatever. Ain't shit to laugh about in this day and age, Tom. Oh, oh, Damn right. Okay. Well. Anything else that you would like to discuss in today's episode of the podcast? Because not, not I, but I'm surprised you didn't bring this up before. Wes Anderson's first Oscar win. That's very true. Very short true. Film. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to watch his uh, his short film, but the wonderful uh, story you, of Henry Sugar. You know, I loved uh, his adaptation of. Uh, uh, the amazing, wonderful, what the fuck is that? The, the wonderful story of Hen- oh, oh, oh. The fantastic, the fantastic, the fantastic Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox, yeah. Fox, yes. Big Wes Anderson guy here, as you could tell. But um, I, I loved, I loved that. I thought that was a great use of uh, Road Dahl, uh, especially you know considering his other works being adapted. You know, haven't always been you know up to par. You know, the uh, uh, Johnny Depp Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's just that shit's insane. But Fantastic Mr. Fox, yeah, hit it right on the head. It was cozy, it was nice, it was great, uh, very deserving of any praise that it gets. Um, and to return to that same sort of cozy feeling with uh, Henry Sugar and the other um, short films that he did on Netflix, um, it 
it was nice. It felt familiar. Like, obviously, every Wes Anderson movie is going to feel familiar. His style is extremely distinct. But um, And then he doesn't even show up to collect his Oscar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he didn't think he was going to win, or... I Probably not. Yeah, when when he did it, it was lame, because he's like a big Hollywood guy, but when uh, Hayao Miyazaki did it, that show was badass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that yeah. show was absolutely badass. <laughs> you show these these uh, these stupid the Western Hollywooders that uh, that there's other stories out there. Yeah, you stick it to them. Watch me, watch me say this. I'm I'm, like... I'm actually saying this unironically. I hope you know. Oh um, yeah, I am genuinely like I genuinely mean that. Hayao Miyazaki's the fucking man. No, because it would like imagine me being like, oh yeah, no fucking Wes. He's he's just different, man. Like he's he's better than that whole fucking place. Like. He Aria, is the place. Though, he, he is the place. You are the establishment, Wes Anderson. Never forget it. Um, yeah. See, I'm, I was surprised to hear that he hadn't won an Oscar before because I just feel like his style just kind of lends itself to, like, the Academy praise, you know? Because yeah. he has, like, that very picturesque kind of, uh, like, production design and, and, like, his shots and everything. Like, I don't know. You like the Grand Budapest Hotel, right? That's your favorite? I, I love the Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, I did also have a complete 180 opinion on... What was... Uh, oh, my God. Why can't I think of the name? Um, the one thing you did. The the most recent movie Asteroid you did. City. Asteroid City. Thank you. Oh, yeah, because you hated that one. I, I, I don't know. I thought it was mid at first just because I didn't really get it. Um, but, you know... I watched it for a second time, which, you know, a lot of Wes Anderson movies do get better, you know, the second time you watch them. It's just, he's very, you know, particular with his details, and you begin to notice a lot of things earlier on than you would through through a first watch. Um, yeah, it the movie definitely pieced itself together upon the second watch, for me at least. And, um, yeah, it's just bog standard Wes Anderson you know it's cozy it makes you uh it makes you feel nostalgic for a place you've never been before um you know I it congrats it did its on thing. your Oscar congrats on your Oscar Wes Anderson um I don't believe uh anybody can top the Grand Budapest Hotel you think he should have won for that then oh absolutely mm-hmm. Who would have, uh, what, what would have won uh, Best Picture that year? 2013. Was it 2014? It was 2014. 2014? Yeah. Let's see. What what would have came out back then? I can, I can wait, I can quickly check. I don't remember. Oh, God, please. The audio. I'm so scared. You we're can... keeping, we're keeping this in, by the way. Oh, yeah. See, I was, I was, I can't. See, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't surprised to hear that Christopher Nolan didn't have one before because... I feel like his movies, uh, maybe this is kind of a nitpicky thing to say, but he always makes very good movies, but they're always lacking, like, that, like, and this is such a cliche and kind of bullshit thing to say, but, like, that oomph. But, like, Oppenheimer had, like, that oomph. You know what? You like know that, gonna... like that, uh, that, that sauce, that see cheddar. Clock. That cheddar, you know? I Oppenheimer had that. I have to agree with you. If any of Nolan's films was going to win the Oscar, it was yeah. going to be Oppenheimer. Like, this is this is an epic. It was a moment in cinema. Yeah, no like, the way way the, like the way the editing and the and the story and like the shots and, and just the way it all came together, it just yeah. it had that to it, you know? So This being said, if another Nolan movie... Was going to win the Oscar. It's Dark Knight Rises. I disagree. Of course, of course, and like too too pro cop for my liking. Is that right? I'll, uh, the, 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 yeah, I can I yeah. can like like I can I can acknowledge I, I like I can side with cop characters in like a story. Obviously, like Breaking Bad does that very well. You could side with cop with characters without it being copaganda. But when you have the the climax of the movie being the bad guys literally fighting an army of cops in the street, it's too much for me. And 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 Alfred being like, "You, Bruce, you 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 can't be Batman. You're gonna get in the way of the cops. The <laughs> cops are gonna help." He's Batman. <laughs> what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't know. The Bane voice, I used to think the Bane voice was badass, but now, now I'm not too fond of it. 
I, I thought you were used to be more of a Batman Begins fan because I would say I've actually come around a little bit on Batman Begins. I thought... I, no, Batman I've Begins come around is great. Specifically, the suit. The suit I have come around fully on. It is. It looks better than the Dark Knight suit. Ah, uh, sure. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. But like, best suit of all, though, the Batman. Yes. Best live action suit. Let me preface this with saying I think all of the Dark Knight movies are stellar in their own right. Um, I'm not. It's very difficult to pick a favorite. I believe that, you know, Dark Knight Rises, you know, was my favorite at one point. We all grow. We all, we we all, all change. change. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I can't find a bad thing to say about any of the movies, so I won't. I'm just going to let a good thing be good. What's your favorite Batman movie? My favorite Batman the movie? The Lego Batman movie. Good movie. Yeah. I would have to. I guess my favorite one might have been uh, this uh, this most recent the one. Batman? I didn't. I didn't consume any Batman comics. Maybe I've read a page in like Newberry or something. So I don't have an opinion on it from that perspective. But um, I would say out of all the live action and animated Batmans, I would have to prefer uh, the one with Battinson. The Batman. Oh, Batman. I think Matt with Reeves the Penguin is a great series filmmaker. coming out on HBO Max later this year. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. They're gonna, they're also gonna have a trailer for that next week coming out. Yeah. We'll Colin Farrell, yeah. let's 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 yeah, see him. Unrecognizable in the role. Let's see it. Let's do it. Great um, actor. But, yeah. But yeah, that's our uh, discussions. Looking in the next couple of weeks, we got Ghostbusters coming out this week. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, the sequel to Afterlife. Technically, the fourth in this franchise. Fifth, if you want to count the uh, the female Ghostbusters, but I don't think that's canon into this universe. Um, we got Godzilla X Kong. Ooh, so excited for New Empire. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> I, I was excited for this, but man. Did you ever go more, back and rewatch any of them? I, 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 haven't, I haven't watched a Godzilla vs. Kong yet, but the more and more I watch this trailer for the new one, I'm like, man, this just does not look good at all. I think the, the special effects look horrible. I think, crazy. The, I think the Godzilla actually looks like complete dog shit. Like, <laughs> infinitely worse than in 2014 like infinitely you know what's crazy if you notice in the trailers there are multiple continuity errors which i really don't understand how you have continuity continuity errors in digital animation how is that even possible that they mess up that bad you know the shot where like uh godzilla is trying to fend off Kong or kong is trying to fend off godzilla from like that portal by the pyramids I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember the don't the, remember the Godzilla ver- the Godzilla Kong trailer like that. But go this ahead. is gonna sound nitpicky, and it obviously is. But why, why? How do you how do you mess up that bad that there's a continuity error and literally the positioning of a digital character's arm in camera? Maybe it was just easier. I don't know. I, I'm not going in for like continuity. It. I just want to see these two guys fight. I want to see them teaming up against this new monkey or whatever they got. Well, I don't even want to see that. It looks like ass. Come on, Godzilla with it. the uh, Infinity Gauntlet? Are you kidding me? Dude, I think the action kind of looks stupid. The Baby Kong looks like complete shit. Oh, yeah, I, hope, that I hope that thing gets squashed like a bug. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, I want to do a mega dose of shrooms. I, I just and think, I just the think this just whole. Stare at that. <laughs> I think this whole universe was cooler when it was a little bit more. Grounded? Uh, less, yeah, less like sci-fi futuristic like why is it all like like uh like like more like neon like, neon, so, like yeah. futuristic talk- like like i don't know it just it it, it just looks terrible to i can't me. talk I on the know. entire show but check out monarch on apple tv i still haven't finished it yet but from what i've seen it was really good and it's very grounded it takes place like the um the agency in the universe. Like, it cuts yeah, back from I liked, previous times to present day. I, I liked the 2014 one with all, like, the the kind of military Brian conspiracy Cranston, yep. stuff. And the way it was all, like, like dark, like, like darkly lit. And, like, like I don't know. I, I the, the characters weren't really anything special. But, I mean, I find it more intriguing than, like, this recent bullshit. I mean, I mean, yeah, it... I'm not excited for this one at all. It you want a like good shit. giant monster movie? Go watch Pacific Rim. Yeah. Didn't that movie completely fail? I'm sure it did. 
I'm sure it did. I, it was actually it showed up on my TV when I turned it on. I was like, watch Pacific Rim, and I was like, the first knock one? off Transformers. The first one isn't so bad. It's not even knock Guillermo, off Transformers. Guillermo, what is it? It's giant robots. Yeah. I don't know. They're mechs. They're mechs. Guillermo del Toro, great filmmaker. He, yeah, man. I, th- I thought he did a good job with the vision on it. Charlie Day, great comedic relief. Yeah, and um, and let's Idris see who else Elba? is in it. I believe uh, I believe uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Tron Legacy is in it. Is he? Yes, he is. He is. Yes, he is. He is. Yep. Uh, he is Mr. Main Guy in yes. uh, in Pacific Rim. And uh, I- Idris Elba as well. Yeah. And uh, Ron Perlman. Mm. Stack cast. Talking yeah. about Tron Legacy, you see Tron Aries. Who cares? Jared Leto. Jared Leto's back, baby. The only valid Jared Leto performance is uh, Blade Runner 2049. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? House of Gucci? The way he talked in House of Gucci? Never saw it. He talks like I... an Italian crime boss, but it's so bad. The nah. only the only Italian uh, I recognize is um, Adam Driver. I, I, I recognize oh, yeah. his performance in that movie as well as Ferrari. Ferrari? Uh, Ferrari? Good movie. Good movie. Good movie. Good movie. I I was a little turned off at the weird CGI crash scene that they had in the trailer, but you know, it looked weird in the trailer, but it looked good in the movie to me. Really? Yeah, I saw it in the movie and I was like, oh, that actually looked good. Hmm. It 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 in the trailer though, I I thought it looked like dog shit. I I I I honestly care less about how the CGI looked, given everything that had gone down before and after. Yeah, it's just good movie all around. And you know, one wonky scene, you know. Every movie has a wonky scene. Who, yeah, who gives it? Who it's, gives it's, shit? It's it's not it's not about the it's not about the blasted visual effects. It's about it's about the stories, goddammit, and the <laughs> and the and the and the, and the storytelling through the filmmaking. That's what there it's all go. about. If, if Godzilla X Kong has amazing storytelling through filmmaking and and great writing and amazing characters that I connect to, then well, you know I'll what? love it. But it's. It's not looking like that. The will, next we episode, we will be talking about the movie, so I hope you enjoy it. I yep. will suggest you go back and rewatch some of them. For me personally, I think Skull Island is my favorite of the entire trilogy, whatever it is, the MonsterVerse. Yeah, the um, Legendary Pictures MonsterVerse. It has yep. been a pleasure doing this with you both. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you. will be you. back at some point on this Absolutely. podcast. It was great Absolutely. to have you here. I'm sorry we haven't invited you earlier. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. You want to shout yourself out to the the legendary viewers who stayed for an hour and 30 minutes? I don't, yeah. really, I don't really got much going on, folks, but uh, thank you for sticking around. Well, that's going to be a wrap for Episode 5. Let us know if you enjoyed Dune Part 2, our thoughts on Star Wars, and what you're looking forward to in the movie-going experience the next couple of weeks. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ain't that right.